All right, greetings, Kindred. I am Voivode Maquette, uh, and with me is Silent Comedy. Say hi, Silent. Hey, how's everybody doing? <laughs> and this is uh, Tapping the Vein, uh, and today we're handling Clan Toridor. Yeah. This is going to be fun, actually. the uh, There's a lot to go over. There's with a Clan lot Toridor. to unpack with this clan. Like, we could probably do a four hour video unpacking we, this clan. We could, actually. We're not um, going to. <laughs> we're not going to. I'm, at least we're going to try not to. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I think one of the big things to actually go on first is that Clan Toridor, at least in my, tr uh, in my experience, has been where most storytellers and even experienced players have tried to like push new players into starting in Vampire. Yeah, I've heard you talk a lot about that. I've not experienced that myself. Okay. Um, I've actually seen the opposite at my tables. Really? I'll, yeah, I'll, the reasons for it are not probably not very good, but um, the, I can see why people do that, right? Like, the Toridor are one of those clans, uh, one of the few who really embody what it is to to be to feel alive to mm. be human right yeah i think um, i think a lot of in-game torridor propaganda has actually made it so that yes. people try to push new players into playing torridor <laughs> yeah i i think a lot of the real world fans of the game have bought into the in-world propaganda that the clan spouts yeah uh, to paint up this image of the most humane clan when I would argue uh, and I wish this was my reason I wish I understood this when I first started storytelling and playing okay because I'm not gonna lie like we the Toriador were the joke clan of the t at the table like they were the clan that we all just kind of made fun of okay. for the longest time that's f that's um, actually really funny considering the fact that the Toriador are typically the mean girls table yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they're the ones who are usually making fun of everybody else. Yeah, well, that's the part of the reason why. Um, like the way, <laughs> the way that, uh, and I'm, I feel so bad now that I'm actually, I understand the clan more as, as I've grown as a fan, and, uh -huh. and I actually really enjoy playing the clan. Um, but I used to just tell all my players, I'm like, or hey, you can play a Toriador, and they're like, what's a Toriador? That sounds or cool. you can play like, a Toriador, and I'm like, and they're like. Uh, they'd be like, "What's that? That sounds so. That sounds so cool. What is that?" And I'd be like, "Oh, they're just your hoity-toity mean girls." Oh my and, god, there's so much more than that. So they I, definitely are is, that. I'm not there saying is, that they're not. There is so that's that was me when I had only been storytelling for maybe a year, right? Yeah. So like, I still didn't fully grasp the the complexity of Clan Toriador, and I yeah. would argue that they are probably one of the most complex clans. I I think so too. I think they come off as one of the more simple clans that you can just easily weasel your way into and get it you could do it you could definitely fake your way yeah through clan toridor but primarily the toridor are so deep and complex and have so many layers oh yeah at least they like, have the option to the the symbol of the rose uh that's used specifically in the v5 book i'm, I'm sure it's the same in older editions i don't think it's changed much it's changed a little uh, it it has the flower heads a little bigger. Yeah, the flower, the head of the rose is is layered, mm. you know, uh, and I think that's probably not really what they were going for. But I, that's how I interpret it. Which is no, I, I think I think that out, makes but... sense. Is that they are a layered individual, and in my opinion, they are some of the more tragic characters. Yeah. At least they have I, they have the option of being. I I put the tragedy of Toriador the the. The potential tragedy or trauma that the Toriador can endure, I put them second only to the Malkavians. Um, and which I know last week we did Nosferatu. Yeah. Um, so it feels a little wrong of me <laughs> to say that the Toriador have probably more damage than the Nosferatu, but I think in a way they kind of they they kind of do. Yeah. Like I, I like something you mentioned in that last video too is that the uh, the Nosferatu have the opposite problem of the Toriador and that you know with the Toriador have to worry about like does everybody is or the people any, here in my life yeah does anybody like, like me for me? me for me yeah yeah and the Nosferatu don't have that problem well I think you know kind of uh, vice versa on that is that because of that 
the the trauma of the Nosferatu is very much on the surface. Mm-hmm. It's very it's a very vain kind of you know beauty is only as deep as the skin kind of trauma. Whereas the Toreador gets very emotional, very psychological. Um, yeah, they're they're just a very manipulative and dangerous clan. Mm-hmm. That I mean, that's that's absolutely true. Um, they tend to. I, I think you're absolutely right when it comes to how dangerous they can be. Mm-hmm. Because they are the ones who can get closest yeah. to the humans. Like, they are the ones who feel the... Oh, my God. For anybody who's ever been in a bad relationship that you know it's bad for you, but yeah. you just don't want to leave it. Yeah. That's, that's Clan that's... Toreador. It really is. It is, it is it... abusive relationship personified. And... Yeah. Also, there's argument that the Toreador could be even more crazy than the Malkavians when it comes yeah. to that kind of stuff because well, they're not just abusive to other people, they're abusive to themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if, you know, their, their need for that aesthetic. And the, the, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves because I feel like there's still a lot to unpack before we get into the, the mechanics, but I do want to touch on their clan bane mm-hmm. is this aesthetic. No, this it's hopping for- in the banks is this need for aesthetic like uh, aesthetic beauty right yeah. and <clears throat> you know this is very easy for new players to just go i only want lush and luxury mm-hmm. but my first toreador was actually in a dark ages game and i sent my storyteller probably three paragraphs of things that he found beautiful some of them were some of them were just styles and aesthetics and vagities, and other things were very specific. And I think that I think that if you're gonna play a Toreador, you know, and really get into the depth of what a Toreador is, mm-hmm. you, you should probably compile a list. Because if you think about it as you and this is what I did for my first Toreador, I was like, I don't want to just play some vain, you know, surface level aesthetic, you know, aesthetic focus toriad or i want to play somebody who actually has things that they find are beautiful yeah and so i just pulled from a lot of my own personal things that i find beautiful no matter how obscure no matter how random they may have seemed or even quite frankly how morbid some of them could have been yeah um and i think the toriador really should you should really focus on having two or three like morbid things that your character finds beautiful yeah um to kind of reflect that darker aspect of the beast or of the toriador definitely the the idea that your character is basically like you're judged to the point where you actually have a uh, a you you have a penalty based on your your bane severity just as as it is a it's your bane so it's going to talk about your bane severity but you have a you have a a judgment on having penalties put on your discipline use because of how comfortable you feel in a situation. Everybody's yeah. going to feel comfortable in a different situation. Yeah. And but like the idea is again it's it's your bane, it is your it, it's, it's your your antediluvian coming to the surface. You know? But like you also do need to take in consideration what your character's personal aesthetics are. Are you mm-hmm. happy be like, what if what if you're a character who's in the grunge scene? You're a grunge artist. You're a street artist. You like to you you work with uh like spray paints and like uh uh fla- flash mobs and shit like that. Like you do that kind of stuff. Is your character going to be comfortable in the over lush posh Elysium aesthetic that you find in a lot of vampire games? Like could yeah. could that make you uncomfortable? Yeah, that, and that that's kind of building off of what I was saying, right? It's like this character that my first Toreador I made, I had a list of things that he felt comfortable with, he felt uh, drawn to, uh, and found quote unquote beautiful. Um, and for some of the examples I gave were just like lush, untouched nature, mm-hmm. like lush green, untouched nature. He found that you know he, he would often sit up on the balcony. Uh, and and just look out over 
the forest land of, of the, you know, outside the city that he lived in. Mm -hmm. Um, he just enjoyed looking at nature, but then also, you know, he had some aesthetics. So he did have some of the more like fine silk cloth and things of that, like and aesthetic and, and beauty and aesthetic don't have to be just visual. Yeah. They can be audible and they can be tactile as well. No, absolutely. Um, or, or, uh, you know, I don't, old, what is it? Olfactory. So that smell, right? Yeah. Um, so like there, you really want to get into the specifics of what that character enjoys. And like my examples were like the lush untouched, uh, forest all the way down to like the way that skin, uh, perforates when it's lacerated you know like there were there's just see like you're you're going into uh uh toridor anti-trivia qualities in my opinion well i think that but that's the thing is beauty like if you think about the things that you find yourself when when you are walking about through your day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. there are maybe a dozen things at any given moment that could draw your eye and you just can't help but feel to like you just want to look at it for a minute. Right? And I completely agree with you on that. But I also think that's where the society of the Clan of the Rose comes into play. Where if somebody is overtly morbid openly. Right. That's when the rest of the Torridor turn against you. Regardless of whether or not they agree. They're just not admitting it. Yeah, no, I mean... That's, and that, that, that that's when you get the... That's when you get the outcast Torridor who end up like turning to the Sabbat so that they can express the art in the way they want to i i i agree and i do want to come back to that but i think that for the sake of you sh every character should have some like some aesthetic some detail that is morbid mm -hmm. because let's be honest with ourselves and this is why the clan is referred to as like the most humane is we do that as humans true like the 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 I just think that that level of denial is actually one of the things that causes people to be outcast from their society. Yes, I agree. Their their social structure as a clan is very very like uh, I mean they're marked down as the hedonists. They are obviously yeah, involved or, in self-indulgent Oh, you absolutely. Know, like perverted well, sensation uh it, it's just it's that's all the torridor are is is about the idea of making themselves feel good through well, the manipulation of their environment and the people around them yeah i mean look at a mill my character for dark knights yes good example <laughs> a mill a mill is a great example of why the torridor are self-destructive to the like harmful to themselves mm -hmm. a mill was a personality that he had constructed. The way he behaved, right? He Emil becomes this kind of persona of the hedonist, the the catty, playful seducer, you yes. know? And it's all an act. And he knows it's an act. And he knows that you know it's an act, but he still refuses to drop it. That's one of the reasons the, why other clans love the Torridor, though, because they know it's an act, but it still makes them feel good. Exactly. Which makes exactly. them remember being human and being seduced. My biggest regret about Dark Knights was that we there were a couple of uh, text-based roleplay moments we had in the Discord for that game. Mm -hmm. My biggest regret is that those will not make it. Never made it to like recording. Yeah. And and well, and I, I feel like those are for you guys. You know. They are. But they they cap like they showed, you know. There, there's a there's you, a you could a dialogue always, that he had. You could always copy paste those into the comments of the videos yeah, that yeah, they should follow. We could. I'd have to confirm that with Benny's player, but yeah, there was yeah there was some comments like just some some like play by post kind of role play where, you know, um, Benny said something about was talking about his clan and Emil referred to them as the judges. And Benny was like taken back by this. He he didn't expect anybody to know the inside perspective of his clan because of all of the stereotypes and, and propaganda that's touted off about the Bonham Hakeem. Okay. And you know, and then he's like, 
Emil references back to something that we had said, like, which was real world, like months ago in, in like when we first started the text-based stuff before we ever started recording that game was, um, I told you the purpose of our clan is not to really be these vain artists who make fleeting work. Our goal, our role in kindred society is to get to the heart of every other kindred. How could I know? How could I get to your heart if I didn't know the truth about your clan? Okay. And I think that says a lot about, I think, just the, the dynamic that the, how deep Toriador can can really be. I think as a clan, they don't have to be vain. They absolutely portray themselves, and Emil <laughs> definitely portrays himself as as this very vain, surface level, just you know wave of a hand when when something appears to you know he, he wants people to think that it's not worth his time so he just kind of waves his hand but really he's thinking about it in great detail yeah and i think i think a lot of tour i think most of the clan if not every toreador is like that to some extent they act like they're just shallow but in reality they're deeper than they're they're very you know. deep yeah absolutely and i think the reason that they act so shallow is because that is i mean you we could get into some really deep like psychological stuff but i think the the short like the for the broad strokes here is that it's just the clan's culture. Yeah. You know, like they've they've got this very well, they have a deep judgmental. culture. <laughs> they do have a deep culture, but on the surface of their culture is very, very judgmental. Very it's much. Very yes. it's very mean girls club, you know, like gossip queens and, and, and that kind of thing. Um and we always we used to always call them the gossip gardens. Yeah. If a Tory <laughs> player was gonna go go hang out with the clan and was going to the gossip garden. Um, yeah, we always had a we always had a, uh, a a club that was specifically owned by Clan Toreador in pretty much every game that I've ever run. Thicker than Water hasn't run into it quite yet. No, you have a location ran by a Toreador though. Yeah, but we always had we always had the So Rose, the Society of Roses. Oh, and yeah. And the Society of Roses was like a Toreador only venue. Mm hmm. Um. Yeah, which I think is funny that like. The Venture and the Toreador really, I guess I can't say only the Venture and Toreador. The, they're very, every clan kind of has its own like internal gathering. Yeah. But the Toreador make it their bit, make it your business to know you're not invited. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Um, so, going off of what we were just talking about with the Bane and how like they're affected by their aesthetic backgrounds. Yeah. Um, the Toreador alternative bane which amil uh you were playing yes. with this uh has the agonizing empathy where if you cause physical damage while feeding which happens if you feed too quickly you don't take an entire scene to basically like romance the blood out of your victim yep um you end up taking the amount of damage of your bane severity usually aggravated mm -hmm. uh as under the skin bruising around the area that you bit your victim in. So you actually cause yourself physical damage because of it, it's, it's empathetic. It's, it's like yeah. you bite into somebody and if you hurt them, you end up taking the damage from it. That's pretty strict and fun. I, I actually oh, was, very much enjoyed running that with you. It was a lot of fun. Um, I think it's in the first couple episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, a mill had, had overdone it got really hungry and was like i really need to be kind of leading this this coterie yeah through finding what we need but also i'm very hungry and he kind of just gave them their own reins and was like go on i'm, I'm delicate like i don't uh, this isn't a show you know yeah i remember <laughs> i think it was actually like the first session too because like while yeah, we're it playing it you're session. like i can't believe uh this is coming up so quickly. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I was like, I didn't think it was going to come up for a while. Yeah. Uh, and no, I I, just, I'm like, pretty sure it's like the, the second or third episode that's uploaded, but like we played yeah, for like four, it four hours. It was the first session, yeah. He, um, it comes up, and I thought it was a better Bane for the, for the type of story that Prague was going to be. Yeah, and that's the point um, of these alternative Banes is yeah. Some sometimes the clan bane does not fit the story you're trying to tell, so they have an yeah. option of seeing if this one works better than the other for the situation. I think it worked pretty well for the prog game. 
just because the frog game was kind of this incremental like yeah well as, as far as all, we always have the pressure of we need to go 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 yeah and, and as far um, as the standard bane is i feel like Emil would have been like suffering the entire game session oh like the entire the entire chronicle just because of how war-torn prog was yeah yeah like, i mean uh, things that should have been beautiful were not yeah, well, you, we didn't really get it. We never really got a chance, I think, to break down how morbid his mind could be. That's true. Um, That's true. He he was pretty good about not letting that show. Um, but you know the the idea that like Prague is this beautiful city with hit like Emil's art was people. Yeah, he loved like, and I kind of played that up with the agonizing empathy was like relationships, people. Um, uh, what's the word? I'm trying to. Th There's a word I'm trying to think of. But I can't think of it off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, but like history and culture and like revelry and just seeing people happy and or 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 sad. You know, it didn't have to be all good. It was definitely was not all good. But like, you know, people were his medium that he he thrived off of. So seeing Prague in this oppressed, like you know martial law kind of lockdown oh i would have sucked for him yeah <laughs> he would have never had a good die pool for any of his discipline use yeah no it definitely would have taken you down a peg and oh yeah i'm i'm all up for making my players suffer that is for <laughs> damn sure but like i also want people to have a good time and and just yeah. having a 12 session penalty on your character is not something that i want to do to people well, I'll be honest with you. The real reason why I wanted to use the variant Bane was because one, I thought it would come up, it would come up, and also because I didn't really want to have to make a long list of things for a mill. I just wanted to focus more on the him in the moment and the overall story I was telling, and not yeah. get caught up on those little details like that. But I'll, I'll <laughs> ironically get caught up on other little details. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that was the main reason why I didn't do it. But the Bane, the variant Bane is good. It's different. It's not like. It's, it's not this, like, artsy bane. No. It's this. It's it's a bane that plays on the connection to your humanity. Mm -hmm. Whether you're you could have the most morbid, just unfathomably cruel Toriador with this bane, and and they may even look at good and nice and things like that as like anathema. Like you should stay away from that because it's weakness. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, then you have this internal turmoil of every time your character feeds on somebody. Yeah, just because you're not looking for that weakness doesn't mean you want to cause people harm. Right. And it's like, well, I was the way I was going with it is like, you could have a character who is just so super cruel, and they, they think anything good and nice is just weakness, and then they're in the middle of feeding on this this on cattle that they, sh they tell themselves they don't care about. And then they just feel that weak, that quote unquote weakness, right? As that empathy bubbles up within them, yeah, and and causes them harm for it. So they, there's a lot to really, there's a lot of ways you can really play with the the variant yeah. bane as well as the. Yeah. I think the the standard bane is more personalized. I do um, too. I do too. Uh, I just I like this option. You know? I do too. Yeah, I think I think it's different. Um, I think I think in war torn games like we were playing, and it's definitely something that you'd probably want to consider over the standard. I'll be honest. Another reason why I wanted it was because it made it would make us at least make a mill slow down. Yeah, a mill had a mill had the option of of just tearing through stuff. Oh yeah, that is but I didn't. True. But I I wanted as a player to have a mechanical roadblock that would force me to slow down and take those those kind of offbeat moments. Mm -hmm. And the Bane, it didn't come up as much as I thought it would, but it did pro provide that opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. Where like, And I tried to incorporate, I tried to do it without like necessarily making you facilitate it. Like, you know, if somebody would, like a lot of the scenes started, like a Mill's got a drink in his hand. You know, if he's just been sitting there like having conversation with people, like taking in drinks slowly over time, you know? Yeah. But, uh, um, their, their compulsion, you mentioned that they were uh, maybe more, like, damaged, or I forget the exact, tr traumatic than the Malkavian? Yeah. And that is interesting that you say that, because 
the name of their compulsion is actually obsession. an old derang is an old derangement that you could have with Malkavians yep. originally. So the obsession. Yeah, with this one, what it does is it makes it so that there's like a feature in a scene um, that your character becomes incredibly obsessed over. It can be a thing, a person, it can be the room itself, but there's just, it brings back a call to the old clan weakness uh, mm -hmm. that they used to suffer from, where there's just like something that they get completely enraptured by, and it lasts like basically for the entire scene or until that object is removed from them. But like they're, yeah. they're incapable of focusing on anything else, but yeah. like just one item or one I person. Think I got I think I got hit with this particular compulsion once or twice in Dark Knights. Okay. Um, I think it was a the result of a bestial failure on a on a roll. It was a yeah, it was the bestial failure on the perception roll. Um, after we got Kirill the statuette. Okay. And I spent the first I think the first half of the following session in the throes of this compulsion. Yes, uh, uh, you. You I was so moved by the, the idea that of, art was able to to yeah. just the concept that art was able to to cause such a deflection of of a horrible situation. Yeah, yeah. That the 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 like the first half of the next session, like everybody's over here trying to plan and do stuff, and Emil's just <laughs> you're like ice sculpture. Ice sculpture. <laughs> yeah, we can have an ice sculpture for the party. Like, I, and that, and Emil, that was another way is like a mill through parties is kind of like his that's something that, that i'm guilty of doing as a storyteller constantly is like i'll have somebody end up gaining a compulsion towards the end of a scene and i'll be like okay uh -huh. the next scene we're doing you're doing this like oh I, yeah no. i just i just make them carry it on to the next thing i i think that's a good way of handling it um otherwise it just uh, otherwise what's the point of it being there yeah if, you know so it's like no, no, no. You don't get to escape your bestial failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and which, which I think is actually kind of funny. We didn't do it, but I thought I thought we were gonna skip a month in between first session and the second session, and we didn't. We no, no. Sure. It took a little while to do that. I didn't. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we started do, doing the big downtime skips, but I was prepared for the month long downtime skip of just being like a mill has been useless <laughs> he is he has been absolutely oh my god that would party. suck could you imagine having to suffer from your clan compulsion for an entire month yeah god like, i was sucks. i was prepared i was prepared to like do nothing with my downtime actions but plan a party oh that sucks yeah uh yeah i'm glad that didn't happen <laughs> i wish i kind of wish it would have to be honest with you yeah <laughs> yeah so um, the Torridor have Auspect, Celerity, and Presence. Yep, same old standard uh, disciplines. They're again, they're one of the clans that really, other than just like an, a mechanical interpretation of their of their flaws, thematically and discipline wise, they've not really changed any. Yeah, I am. Um, I am obsessive over Torridor. When I, like my first my first character was ever was a Torridor. I've played several Torridor over the years, and. Um, I've always like even when they put the uh, the option to take like sense the unseen in, mm -hmm. I've always just gone heightened senses. Of course, you have to take heightened senses as a Tory door. You're obsessed with yeah. sensation. Yeah, uh, it's. I think that the the Tory door always should like. And this is for me personally. Tory door always go heightened senses, then sense the unseen. I think premonition kind of falls more into the Malkavian ballpark when it mm. comes to aspects. There are Toreadors who can have premonitions, obviously. But yeah, well, I'm really glad that the later books are starting to come up with new options that you're not just stuck with with taking like because when this first came out, like I think level two presence. I mean, your options were sense the unseen or premonition. Like yeah. those those were your options. Like the only level two was premonition. So, yeah. but like I, I I've I've had characters who like are in the middle of conversations. And then it'll start raining outside, and he and and they'll just be like, "Oh, yeah, I have to go do something." And they'll walk away in the mid conversation, go outside, and just experience everything about the rain with heightened senses. Yeah, just like I'm sitting outside, letting it rain on me, feeling that I am smelling the 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 scent of the wet earth 
with heightened senses. I am listening to the thunder of raindrops hitting the ground. Like there, there's so much like that you can just lose yourself in with Auspex with the Toreador. Yeah, I mean, I think that you know the quintessential Toreador in in media is the stop, right? <laughs> Like the Anne Rice vampires. That's yeah. another way I've always heard the Toreador described as the Anne Rice vampires. Um, and so, like the idea that you know their their perception, they just they take everything in. Yeah, they experience everything, every pain, mm-hmm. every pleasure, every everything, and that is Clan yeah. Toreador. Yeah, that that's a good way of just summer. Like we could <laughs> we could cut it right there, and I would say everything that you need to say. Roll credits. <laughs> Drop that sick outro. <laughs> Dude, when you said that for the DOS, I lost it. <laughs> uh, okay, so like typically they use the aspects for higher understanding and getting involved in their art, extra feeling. Can you imagine the art of seduction using using heightened senses, using aspects in general? Oh, yeah. um, celerity is typically used for either dancing or working faster or it's especially with some of the newer levels of celerity where you can actually do things that would take a long time quickly not not yeah. that you get extra actions but like here's a thing that w- is going to take one character an entire scene but this celerity power allows you to just get it done yeah you know like that's useful yeah there's there's um there's a Mutants and Masterminds third edition, which I know is way out of left field for vampire conversation. It's a game. Um, Bring it in. <laughs> they have they have two they have two different differenting uh power differential powers. Okay. There's speed and then there's quickness. Right. Mm-hmm. So speed is how much you can move in a turn, and quickness is how many things like how many just random things you can do. You know, so it's the difference between Flash running from Central City to Gotham City in less than a minute. Yeah. As opposed to Flash cleaning his entire house, doing laundry, and setting up birthday decorations for Iris. You know, it's yeah, the, yeah. That's kind of the, the kind of the separation there. And so extra like, points the for Silent for knowing the name of the love interest of the Flash. All right. Oh, I'm a huge fan of the Flash. Yeah. Dude. No, we are at this household too. We like the DC <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So like, it makes sense to me that the Toreador use it. Right. It's like if they're in the middle of painting something. Um, you know, they run out of paint on their on their little board. They, you know, celerity, boom, boom. It's it's full before you even blink. You know, and yeah. they just keep going. You know, they don't waste any time. Very true. You also like get the, the combat toreador on occasion. I, I was going to bring that up. Yeah, the combat toreador, uh, the warrior as we the, used the to call it. The warrior, the martial artist. Yes, or the the mercenary, the assassin yeah. for hire. There used to be a um. I think I think. It might have been introduced in V20, uh, but it may also be older than that, the Ishtari. Actually, no, I'm pretty sure the Ishtari came from the Ebony Kingdom. Yeah. They're the version of the Torridor from the Ebony Kingdom. Uh, and the Ishtari are uh, warrior artists uh, dedicated to the goddess Ishtar, which is supposed to be one of the names of the Torridor and Deluvian. And they have presence, celerity, and fortitude. And their whole thing is battle dancing. Yep. Which is which is pretty cool to, to think about. Like, oh look, it's a Torridor, and he just whooped your ass while dancing, man. Like you should take you should take some willpower damage on top of that <laughs> on top of that physical damage you just took. <laughs> yeah, I uh I think that you know, a mill a mill kinda hit a lot of different Toreador like Socially, Emil was a poser, mm-hmm. um, because he didn't like. I had no dots in craft on Emil whatsoever. Um, you know, he's not an, a quote a, a, a traditional artist. Okay. Um, but he had a little bit of of that war that war nature in him, which is not something that he started with in his story. It was something that was later kind of imposed on him as training that he had to undergo and as yeah. he went through that he, he found he found an aesthetic and tactical um preparedness you know what i mean does that make sense like yeah tactical equipment tactical processes and strategies and and routines that's, like he, he found that's a little actually, bit of fun in that too that's actually something to think about also when you're just talking about tactical components mm-hmm. is like how many toridor are obsessed 
with the tools of their artistry. Oh, they uh, where you have the, them, the paint brushes, the sculpting equipment, stuff like that. But think about the idea of the espionage Toreador who like takes out his fancy case and like rolls out the array of different like spy tools. Yeah, the bugs. Like they're the there for the toys, you know? Yeah, I I think they should be. I think that I think if you want to really bring your Toreador to life, make a personalized effort. Yeah. To like to kind of detail their their tool, their arsenal, so to speak. Um, oh my hit. my old I, I'm I'm not trying to sidestep the Toreador here, but like when I played my big Zamitsi, uh Marcus, he had I had I had this massive carpet bag. And <laughs> like I think out of the years that I played him, and I played him for several years, out of the years that I played him, I may have opened that thing maybe like three times. And it was just filled with an array of different types of like upholstery needles and yeah. threads and stuff like that because I was a tailor. Yeah. And I would sew people together. <laughs> <laughs> people are like oh no vicissitude here it comes and then they see the needles yeah and they're so like oh no, god no. this is worse <laughs> this is gonna hurt a lot more yeah yeah uh which i mean you, you mentioned the the zamisi but the torador and the, the anti-tribute have a little bit of a of a kind of mixed blood thing going on with the Zemisi. are we talking about the vulgari we are i do love the vulgari and i'm very sad about how next to impossible they are to bring into v5 yeah again i still 1000 percent say i'll save that com i'll save that complaint for the zamisi video but yes i agree well i, th I think it fits here because it's toreador okay the Vol the, the vulgari toreador were a uh toreador anti-tribute line uh who eventually ended up rejoining the camarilla in the storyline for v20 and the uh met uh, by night studios uh larp um where they joined the sabat strictly because the camarilla would not accept their style of art mm -hmm. like it wasn't about ideology it wasn't about belief structure it was about the fact that their art pushed the limits of the masquerade because of how dark it could be with how how yeah. bloody it could be and they ended up becoming involved with the Zamitsi to the point where a Vulgari Toreador could learn the first two levels of Vizistitude without a teacher. It was so ingrained yeah. in their bloodline's teaching. Now, unfortunately, yeah. to pull that off in V5, you would also have to have Protean and Dominate to be able to get into doing anything like that. So I, it's, I it's personally. Hard. And and they're gonna hear me. The community is gonna hear me rant about this when we get to Zamisi. But I guess I'm getting into it earlier yeah, than I expected. The fact that they copped out and made it dominate and Protean and not Auspex and Protean from the very beginning irks me to no end. Auspex and Protean, I get, I get it. Dominate and Protean, you're 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 dominating your body to change. Yes, that doesn't need to happen. Protean already changes your body. Yeah, but you're do okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say I was gonna say yeah, but you're dominating your body to change in a specific way, not do what Protean does. I, it doesn't to me that doesn't make sense because Protean is already about changing the body. I agree. It should have been vicissitude should be an amalgam of Protean. I think it should have been Protean and Auspex because the Zamisi have traditionally always been transcendentalists trend okay. yeah yeah i i agree there should be a level of almost shamanism and, yes as and far as the meets to go like, and auspex is definitely be, a shamanistic power it should be auspex to protean to i can see because that. you have to be able to see beyond what is physically there and then use protean to change the shape physically i'd be happy to kind of change it i i would even i'd go be as happy if resistitude was a base auspex discipline interesting like i i think That's it fair. fits perfectly for i think it fits perfectly for protean i don't think it needs to change out of that but like i also wouldn't argue if it was just zamitsi auspex is that of course that would also give me options to have all the regular protean <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> so I think I'm just I, being greedy. 
I don't know. I mean, is it is it too outlandish from previous editions lore to say that like Auspex and Protean, when utilized in conjunction with one another, allows vicissitude to not only vicissitude isn't just shaping the body but reshaping the soul. I that's like is that that's poetic as hell, dude. I like that. I think that was I like way that too. Better. That is way that is way more poetic than I was expecting. And, and, then, and then it adds, and then it well, but think, but then think about it. It adds, and I I know this is the Toriador video, but I promise this is going somewhere. Uh -huh. It it adds. To, <laughs> don't uh <-huh> me. <laughs> it adds to the idea that vicissitude is like in you know that kind of incorruptible nature of vicissitude because it's not just changing your form; it's changing your soul. Okay. And the fact that the the Toriador who I forget I can never say their name correctly. The, the Vulgari. Bloodline of Toriador. The Vulgari, thank Vulgari. you. Um like, They're vulgar. Explain yeah, it explains why they're so like it it's so easy for them because it's they already kinda have that auspex, you know, development. Yeah. So then they could pick up the first two levels of Protean and have it. Yeah. But I can I, I can see it. My rant's over. I, I see it. I do, but the first two levels of quote unquote vicissitude are a lot different now. Yeah, because they've turned vicissitude. In my opinion, it actually makes more sense than the original vicissitude, where it's like you don't start seeing the development of vicissitude until the second level of protean, and mm -hmm. it's everything that you can do to yourself in one yeah. shot. I like yeah. that so much better than, oh, oh I can change too. my face. Oh, now I can work with flesh. Oh, I can now work with bone. I like the whole, it's all about you. No, I and agree. And it's like, about other things. I, will, I like how the power of vicissitude works. I just think it's such... A, it's sad that we lost the Vulgarian it's such translation. It's sad... Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm less sad about that and just less and more sad about the, the actual fact that they just... I get it, like, the old... Zamishi had dominate, but again, getting off topic. But yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that's getting he, into old clan and blah 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 blah. Yeah, blah. but I still think Zamishi should I have think, aspects. I one hundred percent agree with you on that. To make this all make sense for a Toriador video, what I'm saying is, you should homebrew Protean and aspects are what you need for business to not dominate. But <laughs> done, so that you can play Vulgar. <laughs> Mike dropped. Um, <laughs> you you open that can of worms. I'm sorry. We got I, I, I got off topic, but I I had to, I had to get it out. Okay, I I'm not so, gonna I'm not gonna argue with that at all. I do. <laughs> I miss the Vulgari. They were one of my favorite. Oh yeah, uh, they were lines. they were super interesting. They're probably my favorite part about V20. Truthfully, really? Yeah. Well, I like them because it kind of gives you like a a narrative representation of the morbid Toriador. Mm -hmm. Um, which you were talking, which is, I said all of that vicissitude rant to come back to this point. Really, was the um, you mentioned that like the Toriador should have like a set of tools that they're just as obsessed about as the art itself. Yeah, and for the Bulgari, that art was vicissitude, or those tools were vicissitude. It was the the, the crafting of discipline. Yeah, and learning, well, I mean, at that point, their that. their tools are their hands themselves, as any sculptor right. would agree on. Yeah. But then, you know, in that same kind of narrative space of, like, this kind of vulgar, morbid Toreador, your serial killer Toreador. Mm -hmm. they, they're, you know, they're the, or, or you know, another example, uh, David, <laughs> your player David yeah. is, might get a kick out of this. Okay. Uh, you know, if you have the assassin Toreador. Okay. Well... John Wick busts out the box, you know, that <laughs> the, the crate of coins and, and, and magazines and ammo and guns. But if you have, like, your serial killer, Toreador, you have, like, they roll out a thing of, like, knives and, yeah. and you know, saws and, and all this stuff. That well, gonna, we're like, getting into, like, Dexter. American Psycho and, and, but the, that is a thing and for Dexter Toreador. territory. No, yeah, I completely agree. Even, I completely agree. If you're going, um, if you're going to do an art project, you put out your equipment. Yeah, you 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 put newspaper on the table, you know, like you know, that's that's you, another. I think that's another one of the layers of the clan of the rose is that like there is that kind of morbid, dark, inhuman. Kind there, of there's a level art. of there's a level of dark Malkavian inside of every Toreador. 
Yeah, yeah. There really is. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't disagree with that statement. You know, I think that um, there was a there was a um, actual play mm-hmm. that uh, I believe it was Josh the the YouTuber of Strange from Strange Adventures. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, one of the ran... one of the one of the success stories of YouTube uh, World of Darkness <laughs> content creators. Yeah. Or my hero. May, may, um, may we reach his level of fame. And may, <laughs> may I just? I used to have conversations with him in his Twitch chat and just like talk with him. He's a super chill guy. Nice. I recommend. I recommend like free promotion shout out for Strange Adventures. Josh oh, yeah. is an awesome Strange guy. Strange Adventures. Is he still doing um, Strange Adventures or is he just like strictly working with the Chinese room now? I think he, right now he's strictly working with the Chinese room. I don't know if he's. Still, I miss. I, don't know if he's I miss his uploads. Not, I really do. I do too. I I was even following him on Twitch there for a while and just hanging out with him in his yeah. chat and like, you know, it'd be one of those where it's like, hey man, don't have a lot of time. Just wanted to say hi and he'd you know he'd always he'd always comment back and That's say cool. something on stream. Yeah, so he, he was a nice, really cool he's guy. A nice guy. Um, but he did a uh, all Toriador <laughs> coterie one shot. Okay. And one of the player characters was the the morbid toreador the the murderer and she was i forget the character's name but she was very very confrontational yeah because she had been ostracized from the clan socially because her art form was not quote unquote acceptable yeah by the rest of the garden which is something that kind of you said at the beginning of the video so there's definitely room for those more hedonistic um kind of characters i think yeah no absolutely or psychotic maybe more accurately describing them but i, th- I mean think about it because i've actually had this concept before and i i i, I love well, they're known as the degenerates I mean, too you know exactly yeah and you know i love to think just think about character concepts and like really try to flesh out who a person is as a character i had this concept of somebody like who was like very morally you know, sound very, had a very strong code of ethics, and then they get embraced into the clan of the rose, and there is zero of their high humanity aesthetic in their curse. Yeah, it, they only find beauty in the morbid. They only find beauty in the cruel, and so like you, you could have a really fascinating and like just interesting story about a character who the the toreador bane because it is a curse right i mean it's the it's the curse of that cain gave them yeah is that um you have this really high humanity you know maybe you're a consensualist right and your character has these preferences of higher morality but then your clan bane perverts that's true that's true you could definitely go completely backwards on that like yeah do the opposite like your clan bane perverts every scene that it flares up in yeah you're like you suffer when there's not morbidity and cruelty around you and but you suffer as a person right as the individual when it is around you because you don't want that to happen Mm -hmm. um and so you can have a really fun character concept a really fun story yeah no i can see that in that in that boat um you know like you can that character could be anybody Hmm. except maybe a serial killer but they would turn into one eventually i mean i mean it's they, only definitely could. they definitely they inevitably could. every inevitably vampire has the option of turning into a serial killer that's kind of yeah, what that's, they do that's, yeah that's what predator type <laughs> does to you you it gives you an mo yeah you know yeah um sure. yeah. so are, do you want to go do you want to go through the archetypes tonight yeah we can absolutely uh, time. yeah i mean if we if we push through it so uh first we have the le artiste um, the Toreador indulge in the beauty of all art forms and strive to be creators themselves, whether competent, um, on the strings of the violin, weaving notes as lustrous as the subtle glow of the crescent moon, or wielding a spray can to form harsh prismatic lines on back alley walls. Uh, this kindred is an artist revered intensely by their clan so this is going to be like your actual straight out artist toreador what yeah. everybody thinks a toreador is meant to be yeah. your stereotype i had two concepts i had one concept come to mind while you were reading that okay 
And another one that I thought about for a very long time that I forgot to bring up earlier. Okay, go for it. The one, that, the the one that I forgot to bring up earlier. I'll say it because it's it's the more simple one. Um, Five Finger Death Punch, the Toreador. Okay, so like like from Kill Bill kind of thing. Well, like the have you seen the lead singer of uh or the the people in uh the the band Five Finger Death Punch? Oh, okay. I'm sitting here thinking about like never go go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, no, like you know they're like six foot bald head burly dudes with a great big like cthulhu braided beard okay um yeah like somebody like that who's just like sleeveless leather jacket like heavy metal as their thing yeah um that, well, that's the concept so many of types of art art yeah you know however the more interesting one that i thought of and i thought of it while you were reading that was um when you read the line uh where is it they strive to be creators themselves. My brain did a really weird thing and was like a high intelligence scientist trying to create life, trying to play God. Okay. That sounds that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not a very social Toreador. No. But, it, but you're you're like obsessively trying to like you know, whether you're working in with like um the lab you know, there's Toreador. The, the la- yeah, the laboratory Toreador. Um, the, the Labrador. The, lab- <laughs> the, lab- the Labrador. The Labratoriador. Um, the Labrador. That's funny. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I I'm think tired. that the idea... For that, that is where my... <laughs> me too. That's where my brain went. For whatever reason, that was the first time I'd ever thought of that concept. But I think it's a really interesting idea of like yeah, this, this that scientist is interesting. Toreador who's like obsessed with being uh, like the only true create like art worth creating is the art of life you yeah. know some kind of kind of upset you know you get you can get really like dr frankenstein um kind of with that toreador mm-hmm. you know which i played in a dark age game years ago years and years ago and there were two people who came in um who played a a, a male and a female toreador who were the char- they were the pl- uh, the characters who invented the old clan shields. Oh, okay. Like That's that cool. was their whole concept as they came in and painted the clan shields for the game. That's cool. It was it was pretty cool. It was it was really neat. It was unfortunately not something that lasted long because after their concept was done, it was done. Yeah. But like the idea of somebody who actually comes in and just goes, "We have eternity to create." Mhm let's do that like it's it's very nice to see yeah yeah there's nothing wrong with your the the more run-of-the-mill artist you know painter mm-hmm. uh musician act you know actors i think maybe i've brought a freaking uh i i've brought an easel and paints to game before yeah yeah so yeah i mean it's it, it's interesting but you don't I don't know. I think there's so many people out there trying to play the special Toreador that, like, the artist Toreador has actually kind of faded into the background. I don't hate that. I'll be honest with you. I don't hate that. Okay. Um, I maybe it's a product of the of the types of games that I participate in, but I've never had a game that was thrilling or interesting for me where I was just and the artist mm. or like a game that would it's for me personally it's not a concept that excites me maybe it's because i'm i was an artist and cut like in real life for yeah. a great many number of years well and you that, mentioned like, that you got burnt out because of college i yeah college college art classes don't make your don't make your passion your profession um yeah. that's what i learned there, i disagree but, yeah. but that's me <laughs> yeah no <laughs> Don't let other people control your passion if you're going to make it very, your profession. Yeah, my way of that's saying. that's very accurate. Yeah, that's a good way of looking that's at why it. Why I'm but... freelance. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's why I don't. Maybe that's why I don't mind that the artists are are kind of falling to the wayside. Mm. Um, but I think now in in today's society too, you have more um, digital content creators. Or, that's or true. I mean, you got those creators. those digital artists, man. You can do some cool stuff. They can do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, some really. Good it stuff. really, yeah. My, uh, it makes me feel a little uh, spiteful. Not spiteful, but a little like just that little bit of ouch, my soul. Uh, because when I was going to school and getting my degree in art, um, my family kept telling me like, "Oh, you're never gonna get a job in art. It's not a. It's not gonna be a fruitful career for you." And I'm like, 
I'll show you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and here I am with a classical, like more traditional art education, like pen and paper, easel and paint and charcoal and all this stuff, you know, and now the world is just digital everything. I mean, I still think there's a place for your classical arts. I haven't seen one in a long time. I, I don't think it's easy, but I do think it exists. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We had a uh, we had a Toreador actually when uh, th ev like thicker than water is what thicker than water is now. But like what a lot of people don't realize is it started off as a game called the Sun City Chronicles, mm -hmm. uh, where instead of being set in Portland, Oregon, um, the first couple players from this game actually started in Sun City, Florida. Yeah, uh, which by the way is a hole if anybody wants to go see it. Uh, it's a horrible town. It's a Publix, a bank, a trailer park, and parking signs for golf carts everywhere. Uh, that's all it is. <laughs> so our Sun City was actually a fictionalized version uh, with the name Sun City, and it was more based off of like Jacksonville and New Orleans. Like it go. was a lot bigger and a lot more fun. Um, but uh, there's a there. We had a player at the at the time. Um, uh, she actually comes back and plays a character later on. I have not uploaded videos for it with her in it yet because I am so freaking far behind in Thicker Than Water. But um, there's a there's a Malkavian named Wilma who comes in much much later. Okay. But she came in uh, originally. She was one of the original players of the Sun City Chronicles, and she played a Toreador by the name of Ramona, who was a streamer. She was a oh, Twitch okay. a Twitch streamer, and she had heard and contacts and influence and fame on Twitch playing video yeah. games. Yeah. Like, that was her whole art, was content creation, which was really cool and something that was, that was just fun to see. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that is, as we're kind of moving as a society into a more digital uh, kind of format for everything. I, I see gonna, it. I see it really as like a place for like Anarch Toreador in the modern I was, world. I was, I was about to say, like, I feel like there should be, uh, there should have been more, uh, like a new kind of internal faction within the, uh, the, the Toreador as a clan mm -hmm. comprised of mostly like modern and, and young Toreador digital, kind of like digital age Toreador, the digital age Toreador, as opposed to like your, your more classical Toreador. Mm -hmm. I think that would have been, there's a lot of, I think there would have been a cool place for that in five, uh, V five. I do too. And I, I still think that's still a thing. It's in still fact, possible. uh, in, in, uh, the darkness emergent stuff, uh, with the LARP, the, the LARP events that are being hosted by by night studios, there's an entire, they have all these different groups that work within the Camarilla and the Anarchs. And one of the groups is called the Digital Collective. Oh, okay. And that actually might fit very well into their group kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, there's the whole presence power. Which we haven't even talked about presence. Holy oh, crap. Presence is just... It's like their bread and butter. But Well, um, and also I see is their major downfall. Yeah, it Because is. that's the thing that I was saying with the Nosferatu is like, after a little while, there should be a level of paranoia going, how many of these people love me for who I am? And not because I am radiating some type of like attraction. Well, I mean, it gets into you get into that, but you also go like a step further with it, and it's like, how many of these people are like holding on to what they felt about me when I used that power? Yes. And now they're just chasing. How many people me are just that... addicted addicted to what I put off, not of who I yeah. am? Yeah, now well, they're now they're just chasing me so that I can make them feel that way again. Here, you know, here's a like, here's a show drop. Have you guys have you seen uh, Wednesday on Netflix? I have, I have not. No. Okay, so there's a television show based off the Adams Family character Wednesday. Yep. It's dark. It's very funny, but it's very dark. It's Tim Burton, probably as at his best, in my opinion. Okay. And Jenna Ortega plays Wednesday Adams as she's going into like a boarding school kind of situation because she almost killed some kid in a standard school. <laughs> it's a great story. Uh, uh -huh, but, but she gets sent to a place called Nevermore Academy where there are like vampires and werewolves and other supernatural things at this school. Okay. And like these things just apparently exist and the world understands, but they're discriminated against 
Monsters okay. are just discriminated. They're just people, but they're discriminated against. One of the varieties of monsters that they have are sirens. Like, like you know, like, uh, like Actual call pirates. sailors, call yeah. sailors to their death sirens. And one of the situations they have is there's this one character who, like, people don't know whether or not they can trust her because they don't know whether or not they actually like her mm -hmm. or if she's doing something. And yeah. on the flip side, she doesn't know whether or not people actually like her or if it's just because of what she naturally puts off. And I see that kind of thing rubbing into Clan Toreador really, really hard. The whole yeah. concept of, can I trust these people when the chips are down? Like, where where is it logical for me to go, I actually have friends and not people that I just use? That can be hard on the people doing it. Yeah, I mean, that was that was part of the internal... Like, I didn't really bring it to the surface of the character a whole lot, but that was, like, the internal struggle with Emil. Yeah. It was like, he wanted genuine connection and feeling. Um, but you don't and, know if you and, have it. And he made actions in the direction to achieve those things, but everything he did, like, even the actions that he took to establish genuine connection with the other characters, still kind of in his mind had that dual purpose of... If it's not reciprocated, I'll just use it to manipulate them. Yeah. And that made him feel incredibly lonely. True. I I mean that's that's just that that right there, right personally is the curse of Clan Toreador, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Um so back into the archetypes, because we could just go all over the place and we're we're oh, already we, over we an hour. For, <laughs> say, we can talk for four hours on this clan. We dude. could, we could. They're so deep. We're, not, we're, we're gonna really try not to. <laughs> Uh, we've got the stage manager. Uh, mm -hmm. It says, without a, puppet, uh, without a puppeteer to pull the strings, the puppet would not know how to dance. This diva's fingers uh, is constantly on the pulse of the night. They know every happening at every nightclub and bar worth a visit. Uh, and likely have great influence over several such places and the people who go there. Uh, deeply connected to the city's social atmosphere, they have uh, the knowledge to help others gain or lose the spotlight as they please. This is the harpy, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, this is the individual, or the herald nowadays, yeah. but this is the individual who knows how to make or break social standing of other people. Mm -hmm. This is a dangerous character. Yeah. Definitely. This is a very dangerous character. This is somebody who probably doesn't have any moral qualms about manipulating others. Yeah, well, to, people to are toys. Interest. People are toys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, <laughs> I don't mean to keep going back to it, but it's just the most recent experience that I've had with Toreador was uh, Emil did a little bit of this. He, mm -hmm. he, he Like I said, he, he kind of dipped his toe in this a little bit too. With I, the, um, I figured 50% of, of this session of this talk was going to just be to us talking about Emil. Well, I don't mean like, for it to be. No, but... I know, and I, and I'm not blaming you. It's just that this is your most recent experience, and Emil was such yeah. a a huge part of of Prague. Yeah, uh, so. when he delivered the letter to uh, the paperwork that he collected, mm -hmm. and which I don't know if we got there in the recordings released yet, but he when he delivered that paper to Maya, knowing the ramifications of what that was going to do socially yeah. for everyone in the court. Uh, and then he poured himself a drink and had a good smile and a laugh. Oh, there was so and, much. There was so much cattiness. And the that. and the, it was and the coterie was so mad at him for that. <laughs> but he didn't ask for permission. He asked for forgiveness. It was great. That was <laughs> so that's that's the stage manager. Don't ask for, for 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 permission. Just ask for forgiveness. Yeah. And then and then do it again. <laughs> and then do it again. <laughs> um. So I hope I'm pronouncing this right. We have the gadabout. That's I how I would have said it. Uh, it says, with charisma, social intellect, and and a cunning smile, the world is yours to conquer. The gadabouts, uh, hedonist masters of art, uh, the art of manipulation, uh, attraction, and empathy so well that every shy canine desire uh, their attention and take or take pleasure in watching. What they effortlessly mingle into every click and category. The Torridor fits into any profession. 
uh, in a uh, in handling customers, patients, and clients is key. And they uh, use every trick in the book to get their target exactly where they want them. So it's the idea of just like knowing how to work people. Yep. Um, but more hands on than the stage manager. I see that. Yeah, it's it's more personal. Whereas the stage manager is more um, drop a rumor here, pass a pass a note there. The 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 gadabout is directly interacting with with you know hands on interaction with people. Yeah, my character in uh, Tampa. I'm playing in a in the LARP in the LARP game that uh, Jason Herman is is running in Tampa, uh, Florida. Um, I think I set out to be a stage manager, and I ended up being a gadabout. There you go. Which is kind of funny because my character's job is a stage manager. <laughs> like, <laughs> like unintentionally, but I got hired. Like, I joined a coterie that is actually a band, and they turned me into their stage manager. There you go. So that's that's yeah. I, I would say I would say out of anything, the stage manager is your you know that's the the man the band manager. They're the ones making all the calls. They're the ones pulling all the strings. They're the ones getting all the deals. Yeah, they're the they're ones who are get... also getting people the status or taking yeah. it away, scheduling the scheduling the performances and the and the uh, and the appointments. Your gad about is the your, that's your PR manager. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's out there. That's out there. Like every time you have a wild night in Elysium and you say a little more than maybe you should have, the gad about's there to like. No, this is really what they meant. It's that you know they smooth everything over for you. Mm -hmm. So after that, we have the patron of the arts. Uh, the patron is a collector of raw talent and promising beauty that just needs a guiding hand. They shape not clay or glass into intricate forms, but people, and they see it as their gift to the world to pick out the best before they wither. The patron may pose as an eccentric heiress whose home is open to struggling poets and painters, or they may take on the role of the talent scout or critic, aiding their pupils with funding and guidance in return for their blood. So this right here is the, the artist who sees their medium as people. Their yeah. job is to make artists. And at that point, they have a very interesting choice. Is like, is this artist for the world? Or is this or artist for, for you? Yeah. And at that point, is this artist for the world as in it's going to stay human? Or are you going to embrace it? Yeah. Are you going to ghoul it? You know, I, I played a, uh, my Toridor anti-tribute, which I loved playing immensely, <laughs> uh, was a guy who used to in he used to embrace artists but claim that their art was his okay like he was he couldn't do shit <laughs> okay so he was he was a plagiarist he was a complete plagiarist and i think the closest thing that he ever did is if he killed anybody he covered them in plaster and passed it off as a statue like <laughs> but but for the most part if he was uh if, if he was going to, like, he would ghoul or embrace somebody just to take their art and pass it off as his own. That's messed up, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he was a really, really dirty, dirty Toreador. He was a lot of fun to play. Um, let's see, we got the Thespian Spy. That one's just fun. Can I, can I read this one? Yes, go for it, please. <clears throat> the Toreador love a performance, and the one who plays it being a spy knows how to pry valuable chunks of information from a target, often taking more time than they need to properly enjoy the game. Perhaps overdramatic, yet rarely suspected due to an affable nature, the thespian spy inserts themselves in multiple domains to entertain, observe, and compile libraries of information to exchange for other pleasures. Yeah, for so, others' pleasure. So that's a meal. That's a mill. 100 that's a mill. That's that's yeah. a mill. <laughs> I love I love the concept of the thespian spy. They're a lot of fun, yeah. and there, it it kind of gives you. There's a historic marking on this. Like how many actresses, like both both film and stage, how many singers ended up like spying on the Nazis during World mm -hmm. War II, 
Yep. You know, like they like how many how many like heroic German performers were working against the Reich for the mm-hmm. Allied forces using their art to get mm-hmm. the information. That is I love the fact that this is here. Like I uh... I want to comment further on this, but I don't know if I want to. Do I throw? Should we throw up a spoiler warning for Dark Knights if I'm going to say it, or should I just not say it? I mean, just say it. Just just go for okay. it. I'll like, just spoiler, go ahead. Spoiler, spoiler warning. warning. If you don't want to hear it, skip what he's about to say. Uh, <laughs> Emil was a uh, spy for the local police during the Prohibition. Yeah, he was a he was a, a down on his luck actor who. Uh, who was trying to make his way in in uh, the acting scene, and uh, he he got his big break and kind of found himself uh, in well, the. It's the role the, of a lifetime. Yeah, you know, it's acting, but for a cause, not just for entertainment. I wish it was that morally <laughs> uh, altruistic. <laughs> altruistic. Um, his was they want me to play a uh, a wealthy socialite and that means they have to give me money <laughs> that, yeah so like he was <laughs> he was pretending to be this like high societal wealthy entrepreneur kind of yeah uh guy who's going after these bars and these these speakeasies and and he's you know, making deals with owners and and mafiosos and singers and performers and politicians and all kinds of stuff. And really, the whole time he was working for the Popo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> was, I'm just gonna say that this rich. is the first time that this channel has ever had the word Popo on it. And I blame you. <laughs> <laughs> he was working for the Popo. Okay. For any of my DBZ Abridge fans out there, he was working for the Popo. <laughs> Okay, four times is enough in one video, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just, yeah, I love yeah, the idea. I love the idea because, like, there was a lot. This happened. Yeah. Like, historically, lot, this happened. The 1960s was full of the concept of the gentleman spy. Yeah. You know, well, like, they would hire, like, the CIA, the FBI, uh, freaking uh, the British intelligence. They would hire mm-hmm. actors. Mm-hmm. And, like, socialites to spy for them. Like, that's for, where the whole concept of James Bond came from. The yeah, gentleman spy. Yeah, absolutely. The gentleman, yeah, the gentleman spy. spy. Um, I think that there's there's a layer to it, too, that's very interesting to me. In that The way that they got a lot of these actors uh, historically mm-hmm. was that, like, these most of the people that they hired, there were obviously some, like, patriots right who were who were all gung-ho for doing the right thing yeah but there are a lot um, of people who just wanted the adventure they wanted the money like well, mostly it was money but like the idea that they went to a bunch of people who were seeking fame and recognition mm-hmm. and then we're like hey we're gonna give you money to never be noticed <laughs> there's something oh, sad about there that. there is something sad about that now that you see yeah. that. that's a punch to the socialite gut that's what that is yeah oh you can go to a bunch of down on their luck actors who are just trying to make a name for themselves in the acting community, and we're like, "Hey, we're going to pay you an equal salary, but you'll never get an ounce of the fame for it." Yeah, go to work. True. Yeah, but there's a lot of situations where people did that, and then just like when they were retired, they wrote novels. Yeah, you know, yeah, well, they, I mean, or they they were retired and they went out and started talking to people on talk shows and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, but then they were retired, so like, I don't know, is it worth it when you get the fame when you're older? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. It's a it's a question. Any any like thespian spies in the audience want to? Yeah, yeah. With if this? you're a thespian spy and you're watching this episode, please put in the comments and gain your fame. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Yeah. <laughs> On that note, we really need to end this one because we are over yeah, an hour. Been... We're trying to be good. We're we're trying to stay within the hour. Trying to be good. Hour and hour and thirty. But yeah, this has been. This might be probably my favorite conversation we've had yet. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Like the Mulcavian one was really good, but this one, this one just felt so far. Gangrel's still my favorite. Yeah, I yeah, like. The I had a lot too. of fun with the Gangrel one. Uh, next time, next time, uh, on yeah. tapping the vein, we're doing Tori, or we're doing uh, Tremere. Tremere, ooh. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about there. I cannot promise we're going to stay within an hour on that one. I'm going to do my very best. Yeah. 
but the Tremere, they never did. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna they cover always, them next time. They always promise to do their worst. Yeah. So uh, self promotion time. Here we go. So what what do you got for us this week? Yeah. So this is uh, I am Silent Comedy. Uh, I am an ed- uh, discord admin in the our world of darkness discord uh if you haven't joined the discord yet do so links will likely be in the description maquette um yeah i, I we... think i have the discord i have the discord uh description i have the discord link in all of all of the videos i think i don't often check the that segment of the youtube videos so look at my descriptions sure. damn it i actually put work into those <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Toy our video, tantrum. Every video is about to get another view from Silent. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, come hang out with us in the Discord. We do weekly conversations uh, typically about the topics of Tapping the Vein. Uh, however, we I, I will occasionally get a surge of inspiration to pr- uh, prompt some other questions and things to the community. And, and just kind of, we're just there for conversation. We're just there to, like, Pick each other's minds, hang out, you know, talk concepts, and that's a big thing that I do. Um, I am also a, uh, I guess, a concept consultant. Um, I take requests for uh, to help other people kind of flesh out characters, flesh out storylines, plots. Good ideas too. Yeah, yeah. I've I've fleshed out a. I've I've impacted thicker than water a time or seven. Yeah, you have. Uh, um, but yeah, so I take requests to do that. I, I, I like to really get into the nitty gritty of character creation and I try to help people flush things out and make them more real because I, I just enjoy creating. Um, I'm a, I may belong to the Malkavian, but I'm a Toriador at heart. Um, speaking of Malkavian, uh, I will also be at Darkness Emergent mm-hmm. from June 6th to 9th, um, where I will be playing the character Silent. Uh, who is the friend of the character Maquette, Hi. who are both <laughs> just trying to make their way through the world of darkness. It is my very first LARP experience, which is why I am playing uh, kind of a parallel of myself. Um, and if you haven't already, the Malkavian Tapping the Vein video mm-hmm. uh, currently has a challenge presented to the community in, I believe, like the last 10 minutes of that video. So go give it a watch. Yep. Um, yeah. hit the like button if you want to see me suffer. Uh, not suffer, I'm kidding. But uh, yeah, suffer. so you guys can basically you guys get to impact what I play um, at Darkness Emergent. What is Silence Clan going to be if the Malkavian video gets to 500 like or 500 views and 100 likes before May first? Silent the character will be a Malkavian. Yep. And not a Cadis. Also, if Outstar so, comments, oh yeah, if Outstar video, comments, you know, uh, it's, I, it's I an automatic do, win. For if Outstar Cadis. comments on any of our videos, or we get a family spotlight, it's an automatic win. So <laughs> I shame, think our stuff is too it. long for the family spotlight. Like I, I, I'm not bitter that I haven't been on there in like the four years I've been doing this. Oh, I'm not <laughs> primarily I'm not. because my stuff is so long, and I understand that. Uh, I, it's not. Listen, it's not about. The quality or the quantity. Okay. It's not about the quantity, it's the quality of the shout out that they give. That's true. And that's true. So shameless promotions aside. <laughs> <laughs> come hang out with us in the Discord. Come hang out with us at Darkness Emergent. Uh you can also ch- uh find me playing, as you've heard his name a dozen times in this episode alone, playing Emil, the Toreador in the Dark Knights of Prague. You played a Toreador uh, named Emil? <laughs> <laughs> what? When did what? that happen? Uh, yeah, you guys can find me playing in that game. We have an incredible cast of players in that game, and yeah. a fantastic storyteller who kept us on our toes and our uh, our butts puckered the entire story. Um, <laughs> Clan so yeah, Torridor at its finest. Your yeah. butts puckered. <laughs> uh, look, I <laughs> I stand by what I said. No shame. <laughs> But yeah, so come hang out with us, uh, and uh, you get amazing. more. If you hang out with us in the Discord, you get more of just me being goofy and whatnot. So yeah. it's fun. 
Uh, take it away. All right. Uh, I am Voivode Maquette. Uh, I am a uh, for hire storyteller. Uh, you can hire me. There, there's lots of ways to get a hold of me. I don't hide. Um, but I will also be at uh, Darkness Emergent playing my uh, playing a character based off myself, uh, Maquette. I play as a neonate Zamitsi who is just digging himself into more and more trouble. Uh, and I will be uh, also storytelling uh, twice at the at the tables at the gaming tables. Uh, where I'll be doing a sadly already sold out Camarilla Neonate game, and we have a few tickets left for the Anarch, uh, the Anarch and Silla game, I believe. Uh, I'm sorry if we don't, but I, I believe at the time of this recording we do. Um, I'm I'm so looking forward to it. The community, the people that I've been talking to who are going to be taking place in these games are just awesome people, um, and I cannot wait to to put them through the horrible things I have planned. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that there are plenty of people uh, in the community coming to play at those tables, because I will also be playing at both of those tables. Yeah, I just well, forgot to mention it. From what I understand, the uh, one of the players, the old nerdy one, um, will definitely be there, and I'm excited we, because... I've had a lot of good conversations with them. Very cool, because like, I just ran a... Uh, I, used to, I, I just ran a game set in Boston for him and his crew, where oh, I effectively yeah. got to be a guest ST for an ongoing chronicle for them. That's awesome. Which is something that I had never considered and realized that I love. Because there's yeah. their, their, their characters had so many... Um, it wasn't just Facebook characters. It was people who had a history. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it, was, it was me adding to lore that they've been building for a long time. And I felt privileged to be able to to be able to work with them on that one that's awesome so yeah that was a lot of fun maybe I, maybe i need to start doing like guest star uh like i'll you know i'll i'll guest star in your game as like an npc or, or oh, bring in go. a character and stir the pot up for for your table for a night or two <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun actually that does sound like a lot of fun actually i would i i Taking requests. <laughs> Taking requests. I'll, if people, eh, if people want to, people want to bring Voy me on and hire me to do that stuff. Voy I would love. Voy Voy Maquette is now whoring out silent comedy <laughs> <laughs> on the Toriador video too. The... <laughs> All right. Uh, so yes. Uh, so thank you for joining us um, on this 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 series, which is t it, it's a lot more popular than i thought it was going to be when it came out like i yeah. knew i thought the t i thought the idea of the 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 revisiting the concept of the clan discussions was going to be big because they are still after all of this time some of the more popular videos yeah. and having somebody to bounce ideas off would you know add to it but like i did not expect the reception for this so yeah i'm going to be honest when i pitched this idea to you it came from a long period of time of like just creative drought of mm -hmm. me just needing a creative outlet and not having it. Yeah. And then me going, okay, what's the least like hoops we have to jump through to make this happen? Hey, let's just do a conversation kind of. Yeah, let's hang out and talk like end. we typically do, but you know, and do it on. Uh... I, I have been, I, I don't, I think we should probably take a minute and just say like, thank you to everybody. Definitely. Like it has, it has honestly been, I have been getting, I get all kinds of, you know, comments and messages. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of really good conversations with people. Um, and I know Maquette's channel is growing from this series. Highly. Uh, Highly. Like, we're, 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 at, we're like well over 2000 now and still climbing every day with at the, this point. The, the, what was it? The analytics that you went over, like the oh. growth since the growth but, since we started, we don't need the specifics, but like the growth since we started doing Tapping the Vein for your channel has been... It's been like, I've like gotten 5% of my channel's like traffic within the last month. Yeah, like, that's crazy. And, I, and like I can, I figured, you know, Our World of Darkness was actually pretty, it was bigger than I thought it was going to get anyway. Yeah. But like, truthfully, like the more success that this has the more chance that I can actually just hire an editor and we can put out better stuff. <laughs> yeah. Cause I yeah, so want to, I, I so want to hire an editor cause I just don't have time. <laughs> I would love to edit for you, but I don't have time anymore. Yeah. Unfortunately. But I no, do, I, wanna, I, I do also want to hire out of the community. Like I don't want to, I don't want to yeah. like find somebody who knows what they're doing just because they know what they're doing. I want to find somebody who's passionate about what we're doing. 
yeah you about know? the content specifically that's yeah. that's really important but yeah i just wanted to take a second and say thank you to yeah. the community appreciate you guys like i've i've been uh maquette's usually a one-man band but i've been really well received as so a tag along for this series <laughs> so lonely so lonely but uh but yeah i'm glad that the i'm glad that everybody's liking these videos and you know as we're getting close to wrapping up the uh the core book um, yeah yeah and well, oh my god yeah be, no yeah you're oh got, my god there's like four yeah. clans left yeah and so. um we'll be on to the player's guide and then that's that's gonna go by pretty fast too so you know if uh if people have ideas don't don't be shy about dropping well, them in the comments. Yes, if you have ideas for tapping the vein on subjects that we want to cover, absolutely. But I do want to state that it might take us a little while to get to them because I really want yeah. to go over Hunter. Because yeah, we... Hunter does not receive enough love. It is such a good damn game. Yeah, it is I'm so I, good. I, I know. I'm I'm particular like I'm personally very excited to get into Werewolf. Yes, and uh, we're gonna do uh, Werewolf. Which, uh, I think I think we were talking about doing those next, but I don't want to swear to it. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of in the. I'm kind of in the. Uh, I'm kind of in the vein of. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of in the vein of um, of doing things in book order on release. Yeah. And Hunter came out before Werewolf. True. So I mean, it really doesn't matter. I guess you know what. I, I was weird. gonna say like if anybody wants to like give any kind of like. If, if anybody wants to comment anything about Toridor, what you think, like what your art would be, what your concept for oh, Toridor yeah. would be, definitely put it down here. But also, what do you guys want us to cover next? You guys want us to cover yeah. Werewolf next? You guys want us to cover Hunter next? Like, now's the time. We we yeah, also as, could as just cover of, random shit. <laughs> so. as, that's true. Yeah, as kind of the 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 self appointed community manager, I failed to mention that um, I want everybody at to come into the discord and talk about their what's the concept of your favorite like what's your favorite toreador concept yeah um but then i'm i guess we could put something up in the discord or maybe we could put it you can put it up on the channel we could do a poll you know like do does the because we're like, to put it That's put true. it plainly we are going to do tapping the vein for werewolf and hunter it is gonna happen when is it gonna but happen it's up to you when guys. is it gonna happen we can leave that up to you guys to see what you guys are more interested yeah. in he Maquette wants Hunter, I want Werewolf. What do you guys want? Yeah, that's true. Because I, I do want to do what you guys are interested in. Because I'm interested in all of it. I am too, yeah. That's that's absolutely... Like, if it's World of Darkness, I'm interested. So yeah, I think uh, I think I might, within the next... Uh, you know, with, with probably right after this video goes up, I'll probably put a... Uh, I'll, I'll put a, a poll up on... Um, Probably on YouTube, just so that the majority of the community can get involved. Yeah, there you go. So, all right. I love not making. I love not having to be the one to make decisions. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, so we gave our outro like ten minutes ago. So, yeah, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I guess we'll we'll uh, we'll just get that outro music going, and uh, I will see you guys next time for the tapping the vein of Clan Tremere. Drop that sick outro. <laughs>